I've been doing this for quite a while and I think it's about time I got some help on the channel. Ahoy hoy folks and welcome back. Um, yes, as you've probably seen from the title of this video, we're uh, delving into a maker video today. I realise that I do more art than I do craft on this channel, but um, I've got lots of craft projects that I've been putting off to the side that I think now I need to start bringing in. And this is one of the ones that I've been wanting to do for quite a a while and as you would have seen from the title yes today I am making a puppet so I have a pattern uh, that I'm gonna use which I'll go into detail in just a little bit I was going through my fabric stash and I have I do have some fur fabric but it's more like plush soft toy fur I want something a bit thicker or something with a bit more movement to it something a little bit quirky and there's a few other bits I need to pick up for this project as well. So I'm heading off to Abercarn in North Wales, which is, honestly, if you need a piece of fabric, they're gonna have that piece of fabric, as well as a load of other stuff. So I know I'm gonna be pretty much completely set for everything I need when I go there. But um, yeah, I'm gonna finish my cup of tea, I'm gonna jump in the car, and I'm going to head out. I have returned, I have been fabric shopping. There were so many different furs there. I mean, just look at this selection. And one of the things that I really like about Abercarn is that they sell their fabric by weight rather than yardage or meterage. They actually sell it by how heavy the fabric is. So if you're just looking for a piece of lightweight fabric, actually very cheap and they've always got sales stuff there. I, I could go on about them for ages because I, I really do like going there and I've got so much fabric and remnants and all sorts from there. But would you like to see the fur that I eventually chose? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Look at this. It's this gorgeous orange but it has black at the end of these little tufts and it is so monstery. It is so luxurious and honestly this is a huge piece but this is I mean this was gonna do what maybe six puppets if I wanted to but we're just doing one and I'm sure I will find other uses for this amazing fabric I've got other things as well down here I've got ping pong balls and pom-poms and all sorts down there so I need to get set up here there's already bits of fur on the desk um, I need to get everything set up, I need to get the camera set up, get all of my tools ready and then we can get to making this puppet. Hello, 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 welcome to my desk. Um, we are zoomed out a little bit today because this is going to take some space to do. So yeah, I'm zoomed out just a little bit. So let's talk about the puppet that we're going to make today. It is a hand puppet, a, like a sock puppet, uh, but it's actually using a pattern and that pattern is from Adam Krutinger, which is this pattern here. It's make your own snoof. So this is a, it's a fairly simple puppet pattern to make. This is really difficult to say. It's a, it's a very, it is a fairly simple puppet pattern, but it is so customizable. There is a lot you can do with it. So let me just take you through this. This is the instructions that comes with it. It's all very simple. Um, and the actual pattern itself is made up of two parts. So if I just show you these, we have this, this is the snoof main body part. So your hand goes in here like this. And this is for the mouth. And this is used twice, both for the, the mouth insert and for the mouth plates. And the reason I've chosen this one is because it's simple, because it's fun, because it's customizable. In fact, if you have seen Ragmop and Goose on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok, um, you'll know they use the same pattern for their puppets and they have such a variety of characters. That's definitely what I want to, to go for. So let's talk materials. Well, first of all, here we go. We have our fur. So as I said, this is the fur that we're using and you'll notice 
this fairy, if I just lay it down, it has a direction. It is directional. If I brush it this way, it all stands up. If I brush it that way, it's all nice and smooth. That is the pile of the fabric. And the way fur is made, you essentially have this very net-like back fabric and then the fur is attached to the front. And that is important for a couple of reasons. And I'll go through that when we're actually cutting out the pattern. But I did say we were gonna be able to make loads of these from this. I mean, look, it, it takes up very little space on this fabric. And uh, yeah, we've got quite a lot of this. So as well as the fur fabric, I also have a different fabric for the inside of the mouth. And I have gone with this, this felt. It's just a lovely pale blue color. And I think it's really gonna contrast against the orange of the fur. And it's really gonna make that mouth pop, which is something that we definitely want for this puppet. We also need to make mouth plates. So that is kind of the hard bit inside the mouth. And we're gonna do that with this. This is uh, an old Tupperware lid container. Uh, so the actual Tupperware part for this, the pot is all cracked and broken. So it's just a spare lid and I'm gonna use that. And then of course there are other adornments and accessories. One of the most important ones is of course eyeballs. And uh, I went out today and got a whole bunch of eyeballs from a sports shop. Um, so yeah, these are just ping pong balls. And this is what I'm gonna be using for eyes on this character. I've also got down here a knife. And I also have my sewing box, one of my sewing boxes. So in fact, I'm gonna go through here and uh, get out a couple of bits that I know I definitely need. So I know I definitely need some pins, uh, maybe a few clips as well, just in case. I'll get out my small shears, and then I th think I have in here. There we go, I've got some Taylor's chalks as well. I'm sure there's gonna be other things that I need in there, but that will do for now. Let's pop this out of the way. There we go, and I'm just gonna pop this all just off to the side so that I've got some, some space to work over here. Okay, so. Fur. What I want to do with this is find the bottom. So this is the top. There we go. That's a nice big space to use and I can see that I can get my pattern on here. No problem at all. Right. You will notice, and I'll pick some of these up, these little tufts of fur that are all over the back of this. I've picked a, quite a few of them off already. That is because when this has been cut in the fabric shop, this was sold just as it was as this this big piece but when it was cut actually i can show you over here it was just cut with shears when you cut through a fabric like this you end up can you see this just here we've got a completely flat section and that's because the fur has been cut through as well as the edge of the fabric so we are going to avoid that today but first thing we need to do is actually draw out our piece now I am gonna save myself a little bit of sewing here. Usually you would cut out two of these, put them side by side, and then sew all the way around these sections here. I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I am going to double up. So I'm gonna use the center back line. I'm gonna get my tailor's chalks uh, as the join in the pattern so that actually I don't need to sew that bit. I just need to sew a little bit at the top and the back. There we go. Now, you will also notice that up here we've got some notches for the mouth. So I am going to just pop that in there, mark that. So those notch lines are gonna be great, except for when I start sewing, Taylor's chalk is gonna rub off. So I'm gonna mark the notch marks with a Sharpie or a pen or something else. In fact, even a pencil would probably work. Right, so let's talk about cutting this fabric. There are two ways you could do it. There is a very labor intensive way, which is to take your scissors, come down and to try and get between the webbing, the net at the back and the fur and to try and gently snip around. And that is going to take an absolute age. Here's a much better method. So firstly, I'm gonna get my cutting mat I'm gonna pop this down here. Then I'm gonna take my, my knife. And all I'm gonna do is very gently, just enough 
to cut the fabric at the back. I'm going to go through and start cutting. There we go. And then you see it separates the pile of the fur underneath there. Now, I would usually do this with an X-Acto knife rather than a Stanley knife, um, but I can't find it. I can't find it anywhere. I put it down and I've lost it. So next time I'm out at a craft store, I need to uh, pick up a new X-Acto knife. And you see just by gently pulling the fabric as well, you get a nice cut and it makes a lovely sound as well. Okay, and just like that, we have it all cut out well. Just like that. That was a little bit more uh, struggle than I expected just because the dull knife blade and not having the exact same knife. But you can see I have still got those little marks here for when the mouth goes in. But now I need to pin this together, so right sides together, and uh, get ready for sewing. So a little tip for working with fur. Pinch where you're going to be working and then run your finger along the inside. It pushes the pile of the fur in and it means that you don't get bits sticking out like that. Got a bunch of pins over here and let's just start. Right, that's all pinned there. We'll come back and do exactly the same with this bit afterwards. But for now, I need to stitch this together. And I just happen to have some orange thread. It's always good to use the colour thread for the fabric if you can. So this is going to be absolutely riveting for you because you're going to be watching me stitch orange stitches onto orange fabric, which is, um, yeah, it really isn't going to be that interesting, is it? Now what I like to do is measure the length and go usually about twice the length and doubled over. So really it's four times the length in thread and that usually is about enough to do any projects. And I can thread my needle and then grab that end and pull it all the way down to here. So there we go. Get both ends nice and even together. Yeah, needle at the other end and then I tie a knot in this and honestly this makes starting off just a little bit easier because I've got a loop that I can work with. Lovely, now that I've got that which is now just essentially a great big loop I'm going to come in here, go from this side, let's, uh, let's stitch the right side for me, there we are. And then I'm going to pull this through until we almost come to the end and find this where that knot is and I'll slip through here there we go now I can pull that tight and that has created a nice little loop of a knot in there this extra thread I'm gonna actually bring in here and just hide in the stitch now I'm just gonna come down and I'm doing a whip stitch here which is just over and under. I actually asked Adam about this because he also recommends a whip stitch. So I said, why do you recommend the whip stitch? And uh, he told me that it is the strongest stitch for this type of work. So it's his pattern. He is the experienced puppet maker. I'm going to defer to his experience and say, let's do a whip stitch. Now, you may be asking why am I hand stitching this rather than the machine stitching it. Again, it's to do with that seam. So to, to machine stitch it, uh, first of all, I'd have to add half an inch, uh, three quarters of an inch onto the pattern as seam allowance, which I don't particularly want to do. Also, it creates quite a bulky um, seam and it's not great with fur in a sewing machine, honestly. It's very hard to get anything neat. So this way, not only can I get it nice and neat, there we go, and nice and tight, but it's gonna actually look like a seamless seam, which is exactly what we are going for. 
Okay, there we are, all sewed together, even this little top bit up there, that kind of creates a little lip, like a little top lip. It's, uh, you'll see when we turn this all inside out, but before we can do that, we need to get the mouth in place, and we have this lovely light blue felt, and we have the pattern here, and I'm just, I'm just gonna use a pencil for this, because it's just felt, it's absolutely fine. There we go, right, so now let's cut this out. Oh, I should probably mark this top and bottom as well. T, B, there we are. So fun fact, when I was an actor many moons ago, um, I worked in musical theatre mainly, but I have worked with puppets a few times, uh, both as an actor working alongside puppets, but also as a puppeteer. Um, not very often, it's usually this kind of you know, hand puppet with rods for the arms, which we will get into as well. Um, but yeah, the, I just have a real love of puppets. I think it comes from growing up with uh, the BBC, uh, CBBC, In the Broom Closet, you know, At the Dark and, and all that kind of stuff. Otis the Aardvark. Um, so, <laughs> let's... So when it came to kind of thinking about having an intern for the uh, channel, I thought to myself, why not just make my own. Um, right, I'm going to line this all up and pin this into place too. It's always difficult working with with curves when you're sewing, but if you can manipulate the fabric around enough, it's not, honestly, it's not too bad. As long as you can get your pins through, there we are. If you've ever sewed a sleeve or anything like that, it's a, uh, it's a very similar Thing. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have my pins go across like that. Let's have them go down. And just like that, we have a mouth in place. And you can kind of see already how this puppet is going to work. Look at that. Look at that cute little mouth in there. I think that blue was a good choice against the... Uh, against the orange but I want to give a little bit of firmness to this so I'm going to use this pattern on this Tupperware lid hopefully this pencil is going to show up right now I am going to use my knife and I'm going to cut this out I'm going to do a rough cut first I think okay so this this plastic's got a bit of flex to it and I should be able to yeah there we go I can just cut it out now with these scissors well, so we've got these two little bits down here. All I'm going to do is round off these because I do not want any sharp plastic inside where my hands are. Nice, and then these go inside the mouth here. So one there and one there. And that will give a little bit more firmness and stability. So to join this on, I could have used my hot glue gun, but I want to make sure this sticks properly. So I have some spray adhesive, and this is like a contact adhesive, so I need to spray each part, so in here, and these, and then stick them into place. So I'm going to do that off camera because, uh, yeah, these, these things are full of solvents, and I need to do this in a well ventilated area so I'm going to go and do that and I'll be back in just a moment when these are glued in position okay so you can see these are now glued into place they are firmly in the glue is all nice and dry as well everything's nice and stuck in place we now need to turn this inside out and have a proper look so let's uh, grab this <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I think that, that blue mouth is going to work very, very well. Now, <laughs> we've got a very fluffy face here, which I don't mind. I particularly like it down here on this bottom lip, but I feel like I want to clean it up a little around the mouth. And the easiest way to do that is just with some scissors. So, I'm just going to pop this on my other hand and then think about styling this out.
And the good thing about this is it's getting rid of some of the black in the face as well and defining that face just a little bit more. Well, I kind of like how like, messy and fluffy he is. I'll just get a bit of that out of his mouth there. There's a couple of long strands still that I want to cut back, but I'm very happy. I'm very happy with how this is going so far. I feel like we're starting to get like a, a real bit of character in this. this. <laughs> well, I'm already having fun and we haven't even started with any features yet. Right. Let's talk about features because there's a few things that I want to put on here. Obviously we need eyes, so I need to pop the eyes on. I want to pop a tongue in the mouth and, uh, and then we'll really go from there. <laughs> this is so silly but I love it already. Right, okay, so I've got a couple of ping pong balls and these have, these have branding on them. So I'm going to, when we actually attach them, make sure the branding is down below. Let's. Let's get our hand in again. Think about where we we want these. So we could have them really close to the front, like this. It's actually actually quite cute. We could have them much further back, then that gives more of a snout, kind of a, a, a bigger mouth there. We could have them further apart, like this. It gives almost a <laughs> almost a froggy look like that. We could have them to at the front and apart as well. I think I quite like them towards the front and kind of together. Yeah, that's kind of on that's kind of on my knuckle it all, when I do like expressions and stuff like mm, mm, mm. Mm. Yeah, I think that's that's going to work. That's going to work nicely. Yeah, that's a good place. So, that's just about here. So what I actually need to do is again Go ahead and trim out some fur. If I just stuck these on, I'm going to use hot glue to stick these on, but if I just stuck these on to the fur, then they're going to wobble all over the place because they're just stuck to the fur. So I want to get as close down to the netting as I can with this without going through. Now I've kind of got, you can kind of see I've got little indents here where the eyes are actually going to go. I need to get my hot glue gun and I can't see it in here. So let me go and grab that. Now we can start gluing the eyes into place. Okay, I've had to turn the camera back around because honestly, you're not getting the best view from the top down. But uh, I wanted to show you where we were because I forgot to press record for the gluing on of the eyes. But here we are. This is, uh, yeah, this is where we're up to so far. So the eyes are now in place. He, he feels quite sassy. <laughs> Yeah, but I love, I love that blue mouth. I think it works really well. In fact, I've got some other bits and pieces down here on the table that I'm, I'm thinking about adding. So, first thing, I've got a bunch of these pom-poms in different colors, and uh, we've got some blue ones. So I've been playing around with potentially a blue nose. I think that one's a bit too big. And I've got this one, it's a little tiny one, which I think, it's not bad. But then there's this one in the middle, which uh, if I just pop that in place there, I think that's <laughs> I think that's quite a cute little nose. I've also got these blue feathers as well, and I'm thinking about doing just a little tuft of blue behind the eyes, like a little little blue hairstyle. It gives some secondary movement to the character. And then of course I need to put a tongue in the mouth and uh, pupils on the eyes. But um. Yeah, I think we're gonna go with we'll go with that nose and I'm gonna stick a couple of feathers into place first and let's see how that stands us. Right, so we have the nose on, there we go, all glued into place. That was just with a little bit of fabri glue and a little bit of hot glue. We've got these feathers in place. Now what feathers do on a puppet and ostrich feathers and things like that is it gives secondary movement. So as you're 
moving the, the puppet around, you get this extra movement up here and it always sells the realism of it a little bit more. Now, two things left to do on the face here. I want to pop a little tongue in the mouth and I'm just going to do that with, down here, I've got some black felt and I'm just going to cut out a little tongue shape and pop it in the mouth. There, yeah, you hold that, thank you. And... <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Uh, and then I need to attach the pupils to the eyes. And actually, I'm going to do those in the same way as the tongue. So I'm going to use this piece of uh, black felt. And I'm just going to cut out two circles of the same size. And I'm going to glue them into position on the eyes. It's going to give a nice matte finish. I could paint them on, but then that tends to be a little bit shiny. So this is going to give a really nice camera friendly look to this puppet. So let me go ahead and do those and glue those into position. And uh, then we're almost there. There's just a couple of more bits to add on. Okay, so now the tongue is stuck in. Blah, blah, blah. There we go. Uh, it's now time to get the eyes on. Last bit on the face. Now, I've just got these bits of black felt. And I'm just going to show you what happens with these eyes when you pop them on. So if you put them too far out, then it looks really wall-eyed. It does not look great. If you put them in the middle, then it looks a little bit blank and a little bit kind of not really all there. If you bring the eyes slightly towards the middle, evenly spaced, so it's almost looking towards its nose, then you get a little bit of life in there. And I'm just gonna do exactly the same. I'm gonna use a little bit of Fabri-Tac. It's an all-purpose glue, but great for fabric. And uh, I'm gonna get these pupils stuck on. Okay, so the tongue and the pupils for the eyes are now in place. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm really pleased with him. He looks, yeah, he looks really fun, but he's still missing one thing. Do you know what you're missing? Yeah, he's, um. He's missing some arms. He hasn't got anything down here. So do um, you think we should get you some arms? Yeah, okay. So arms are actually gonna be very simple. I'm just gonna take the same fabric that the body is made out of. And um, <laughs> I'm gonna just sew a couple of tubes. Uh, it's very simple. And then just stitch them onto the sides here. It's not really any pattern for it. But for this, I am gonna use the sewing machine. Yeah, I'm gonna use the sewing machine and uh, sew those tubes and then we'll get them sewn onto the side and then I can show you how to attach some rods as well for those arms so we can get some rod movement. Okay, I feel like this is like surgery, like we've got a surgery table down here. Here we have Nameless Puppet, the intern. That's all his name is at the moment, he's just the intern. The intern is down here and here I have a couple of arms. Now, for disclosure, I was gonna do this on the sewing machine but the fur is so thick that had I sewn this inside out and then tried to uh, turn it right way in, it would have been an absolute nightmare. So I just ended up hand sewing it. Now what I need to do with these is first of all, let, let me show you on here. So I need to attach the arms, there we are, to the body just down here. So they will get nicely attached. And then the arms themselves at the other end will be glued to a little rod like this and now that rod is going to give us let's just pick him up like this there we are that rod that's going to give us the arm movement that we need and there's going to be one on each arm these are just some plastic rods that i had for the garden for creating a poly tunnel and i had a few spare so uh, they're, they're a bit long but that's fine they'll do for now and then when this is all done and i'm getting used to him i will cut them down and create some proper handles for them um, but for now they're fine just as is so i'm going to sew the arms on and then I'm going to hot glue these in place and I think I'm literally just gonna pull the fur back, find a spot, hot glue it in, and then put the fur back over like that. I think that will give me enough. I'm actually gonna set it back a little bit from the end as well because then again, you can turn the rods, you can twist them and get another bit of secondary movement in there, uh, apart from just up and down, left and right, we can get some turning as well. But we are very closely approaching the end, so I'm gonna do these last little bits and then it'll pretty much be time for the reveal. 
Okay, we we are now completely finished. Um, again, no name yet, but here is the intern. Uh, we have arms working as well. Uh, yeah, you can preen himself like that. Obviously, he likes to make sure his hair's looking. Yeah, don't don't eat your hands. Thank you. Um, but yeah, looks looks cute, doesn't he? I love that little nose. What do you think? Like it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, we just need to, we need to decide what to call him. So um, yeah, leave a comment down below on what you think the intern should be called. He does desperately need a name. And then once we've got that, and he's kind of sat with me for a little while, I'm sure his voice will come. It's the thing with puppets. It takes them a while for their, their voices to fully develop. So um, that will come shortly, I'm sure. But for now, as always, from me and from the intern, we really hope you've enjoyed today's video, and until next time, goodbye!